Guys, I'm really happy to welcome to the podcast a guy who is a, a real scholar, a real thinker. His name is Stephen Meyer. Uh, he got his PhD uh, in the philosophy of science from Cambridge University. He directs the Center for Science and Culture at the Discovery Institute. Uh, his most recent book, he's written a bunch of them. The most recent one the is called Return of the God Hypothesis. Um, Stephen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hey, I hear you're also doing a series of Prager University videos on the themes that we're about to talk about. I did some videos on the American founding. Your videos on the are on the issue of origin. Say a word about the Prager U videos and what they are about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The PragerU people do a great job of distilling a lot of uh, interesting content in a very short period of time. So they have these uh, usually five and a half minute videos. Uh, I did a series, a five part series on the uh, the main some of the main elements in the argument that I developed in the book. Uh, the, uh, it's a series on the scientific evidence for the existence of God. When I left after the filming the last one, they said, well, congratulations. Next to Dinesh D'Souza, you've now done more Prager U videos than anyone else we've worked with. So uh, you've done, of course, a wonderful series on the American founding. Well, it's, it's incredible the kind of reach those videos have. And let's talk a little bit about the type of work that you do, Stephen, because, you know, here you have uh, in the in the Bible and the Old and the New Testament kind of oracular pronouncements. You know, God said the in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But what you do is you approach those questions. You may almost call it from the other way around. You approach it along the pathway of reason, looking at the discoveries of science to see see if these oracular pronouncements hold hold up or not. Um, and uh, would you describe what you're doing? Am I describing what you're doing accurately? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good description. I've always been interested in questions that are at the intersection between science and philosophy or science and religion. And some of the most important questions of that type have to do with ultimate origins, the origin of life, the origin of the universe. And uh, what I do in, in this most recent book and previous books is look at the scientific discoveries, what we've discovered scientifically about those, those key issues, those key subjects, those key questions about where things came from. And also then look at what the scientific discoveries imply about the larger worldview questions. Uh, one of the big questions that every worldview has to answer, every philosophy is, what is the thing or the entity or the process from which everything else comes? Is it a, a mind or is it an undirected material process? This is a debate that's gone back to the ancient Greeks. And what I argue in all three of my books, but particularly in this last one, is that the evidence that we have about biological and cosmological origins, the scientific information we have, suggests that the mind first view of reality provides better overall explanatory power for what we see in the natural world. I mean, it seems like you're you're very much adopting a scientific methodology. I mean, even the title of your book, when you use the phrase the God hypothesis, it's almost as if you're saying, look, provisionally, let's treat it as a scientific hypothesis. Let's test it against the evidence. So let's actually do that right now. Uh, you offer three separate lines of argument that are argued in, you know, in exquisite detail in your book. But I just want to touch upon the highlights of them. Let's start with the first argument, which is the the a huge discovery, basically in the last 100 years, uh, the absolute positive proof that this universe of ours, not the Earth, but the whole universe, the whole shebang, uh, had had a beginning. Now, talk about why that is so significant and what does that simple fact that the universe had a beginning tell us about origins? Yeah, well, the story of the discovery itself is fascinating, but it does conclude with exactly that uh, proposition that uh, I'm defending, which is that the universe had a beginning. And when we talk about the universe, we're talking about matter and energy and space and time as well. It's an implication of our best theory of gravity called general relativity that Einstein developed in the, about 100 years ago. And the idea then if, if the physical universe of matter, space, time, and energy itself came into existence, it becomes impossible or at least highly implausible to posit a prior material state because after all, it's matter that comes into existence before the matter originates, before the energy originates, there's no matter there to do the causing. So the discovery that the material, uh, the, the physical universe of matter, space, time, and energy had a beginning suggests a cause, a, a profile for the ultimate cause 
that uh, has the following attributes. It must transcend matter, energy, space, and time. And it must also uh, be capable of initiating a great change of state from, all, from nothing to something. And that sounds like a volitional act of, a, of an agent of great power who is outside of time and space in some sense, transcendent in the way that theologians have talked about. So the uh, positing uh, a, a theistic creator, a God with those attributes, actually provides a satisfying explanation, what, I, what philosophers call a causally adequate explanation for the phenomenon, whereas a materialistic worldview, which proposes an eternal self-existent universe, uh, is inconsistent with the evidence and does not provide a causally adequate explanation because there's, again, no matter there to do the causing before matter comes into existence. I mean, this is such an interesting and profound point. I want to try to state it a slightly different way and see if you agree with my way of putting it. Sure. What sure. you're saying is that uh, at the moment of the Big Bang, the so-called singularity, that kind of infinite point at which the universe comes into existence, that prior to that, and in fact, we even have to put the word prior into quote marks because prior implies a point in time. But there was no time and there There's was no, no space and there was no matter. And therefore, it makes no sense to talk about either matter or space or time as being the cause of the universe because they are the consequence, not the cause. There has to be a cause of the universe that is not bound by space, that is not bound by time, and that is not material. Is that true or false? Yeah, that's beautifully put. Uh, and another way to turn that is to, just to say on, on theism, uh, the, 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 uh, the creation, a creation event, as the uh, beginning to the universe is expected given theism. It's completely unexpected given, given uh, scientific materialism. Therefore, the discovery of a beginning confers greater support on a theistic worldview than on a materialistic one. I mean, you have a beautiful quote, um, which is from one of the, the discoverers of the so-called Big Bang, where he says what? Oh, this is probably Arno Penzias. Uh, he says that it, the, the best data we have, the best scientific data we have concerning the beginning are exactly what I would have expected if I had nothing to go on but the first five books of Moses, the Psalms, and the Bible as a whole. And now we're all familiar with the first words of the Bible in the beginning, and that's, of course, exactly what modern astrophysicists, astrophysicists discovered, that there was such a beginning to, as you put it, the whole shebang, the whole universe. But in the Psalms and in the, the Hebrew prophets and other places in the Bible, in the New Testament as well, you get, you get an affirmation that that time is a created entity, and that the universe is expanding. There's there's about a dozen separate references to uh, the universe either being the God either having stretched out or God stretching out the heavens. And this was a uh, you know a very striking aspect of uh, the biblical view of the the origin of the universe. And a number of cosmologists have noticed this that that's exactly what modern cosmology has discovered. The universe ex is expanding outward in the forward direction of time that's been revealed by the, the, the characteristic signature of light coming from distant galaxies. But then if you back up that, that, uh, that, time, that time clock and in your mind's eye back extrapolate that expanding universe at, in, in the forward direction of time, would at every progressive point in the reverse direction of time be closer and closer and closer together until finally you can't extrapolate back any further. And that point marks the beginning of the universe. Very interesting. Let's take a pause. When we come back, uh, we're going to move on to argument number two. Um, which is generally called, and you call it, the fine-tuned universe. <laughs> 